These back surgeries are often not only ineffective, but they create new problems a lot of times. Sometimes they're effective for a short time, but then you end up like if it's a fusion, you change the biomechanics so much in the area that the forces have to get distributed above and below that, that fusion. And then you start to see breakdown of the tissue above and below. And that's just so common. Hey everybody, Dr. Josh Axe here. Welcome to the Dr. Axe Show. Today I have a special guest, a friend of mine, Dr. James Lieber. He is the founder and medical director of Regenex Tampa Bay. He's actually opening a new clinic in Miami, Florida here soon. And he's one of the world's leaders in regenerative medicine, specializing in stem cell, PRP, and helping people get back to uh really get back to their best in fact he is one of my doctors and my wife dr chelsea acts her doctors uh and helping us with injuries we've had in the past i've injured my back and shoulder in the past and had other injuries an ankle injury chelsea uh tore her acl and knee uh playing volleyball years ago and we were having some pain in our joints started working with him and saw incredible results so if you're a person and you're struggling with any type of chronic joint issue. I'm talking about if you have if you have any type of knee discomfort or knee pain, hip pain, low back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, maybe you're an athlete and you want to take a natural route in healing and actually just generally take the best route. To me, regenerative medicine is the way to go. And again, I searched the entire country myself, finding out who the best in the world was. And I found Dr. James Lieber and some of his colleagues at uh, Reginex. And so he's on our podcast today. And we're going to talk about healing with regenerative medicine. Dr. James, hey, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dr. Axe. I really appreciate you taking the time. I'm excited to uh, have a conversation today. Awesome. Well, great. Well, uh, let's start off talking first about what are stem cells? H how do they work? How, they how can they help us heal? So, you know, stem, we all have stem cells. All living uh, in, uh, animals have stem cells. We are, um, they're involved in uh, every day-to-day -day healing process. So we all, have, we all have systems in our body that are natural and innate that allow us to, to heal on a day-to-day -day basis. So they're just one piece of that, that, that puzzle. They're not the only piece of the puzzle. So I usually like to tell people, you know, typically on a day-to-day -day basis, all your tissues have, and we can use a joint as an example, have a balance of chemicals in that joint, some of which are trying to um, uh, injure the joint or damage the joint and others that are trying to, uh, trying to repair. And that balance of chemicals, as long as you keep it in, in uh, the direction of more chemicals trying to repair, the better off you're going to be and less de degeneration that's going to occur over time. So we know, though, unfortunately, as you get older, uh, that, that balance shifts where there are more, more damaging chemicals and there are healing chemicals. And just without even having to do any injury, your tissue can and will start to degenerate over time. Um, and that's just a normal process. Just like if you, if you uh, develop some loss of cartilage, we know that you'll begin to continue to lose about 4% of that cartilage per year. And that's specific to a, to a knee joint, but it's similar in all joints. It's a, it's a process that moves forward, unfortunately. But you, what your body does whenever you have an injury, let's say you have uh, it's a micro injury or a macro injury, it doesn't matter. Uh, platelets are the first things that rush to that area. And these platelets we know form clots and stop the bleeding, and that's their first primary job. Uh, but then the platelets open up and they spill out these things called growth factors. And each of the growth factors are are basically uh, uh, their job is to call the resource, resources over to the area. They're basically, um, I tell people they're like phone calls to subcontractors. So one growth factor is gonna call a plumber, one's gonna call an electrician, et cetera. One of the growth factors we know is responsible for calling stem cells to the area. And stem cells are like uh, baby cells um, that live in high concentration in, in your bone marrow, but also in fat tissue, and they're kind of plastered to blood vessels all over the place. And uh, when they get called to an area, some of them will actually convert or morph themselves into the tissue that's damaged. Uh, but more so what we see is that stem cells come to the area and they act as um, more like the contractors of the area. They basically uh, instruct the rest of the cells on what to do and they use the growth factors and the information locally to, uh, as blueprints for the healing. So stem cells are really key at orchestrating 
uh, and, and, and involved in healing uh, injuries of any kind. And they do this over the course of, of weeks to months and even years. Uh, so, I mean, that's basically in a nutshell, baby cells that can convert into new cells, but also can become like foreman of, of, a, of a construction site, that kind of thing. I love it. That, that, that was put really well. So in everybody thinking about this, just to kind of sum up some of this, as we are talking about stem cells, one of the things that you started off saying, Dr. James, was you have these things within certain joints. Uh, maybe it's you know everything for inflammatory factors and some of the things that happen from bad diet or bad movement patterns. Right. Right. And so you have those compounds that are constantly damaging an area. We need to have more platelets and stem cells and growth factors that are there in order to help heal the area. What happens to a lot of us is we injure our shoulder or our low back or our knee, and we have an imbalance of these, the, these factors. We don't have enough of these stem cells. We don't have enough of the platelets and the growth factors. So one of the things that Dr. James and Regenix really focus on is using your body's own stem cells and platelets, that basically to injecting those into the area so that area can more fully heal. And so I know that I've experienced this in my own health. It's been absolutely incredible. So let me say this. There are people out there I know that have spent years, Dr. James, who have gone to physical therapy. Maybe they've cleaned up their diet. Maybe they've had maybe chiropractic care, maybe physical therapy, maybe acupuncture, maybe massage, all these different things, and they still haven't fully recovered. That's what I've seen is you guys have taken and worked with people that have seen all of these other practitioners. They've been able to come see you and see seen results where they haven't been able to see any other place. Well, why do you, and I know you've explained it, and this doesn't have to be a long answer, but why do you think that is that people are able to go see you guys and then with regenerative medicine, they're able to see results that they've never seen before. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think uh, it's interesting. This field is, is new and relatively new, although Regenix has been involved in doing this for 15 years, and I've been, I've been with Regenix a good portion of that. Um, it, it, you know, people go through all sorts of, uh, of, of different methods to try and heal themselves once they've developed some type of, type of a pain that won't go away. Um, you know, I just want to say, you know, the things you mentioned are, were, are very good and not generally non-invasive and, and, and more natural oriented, but a lot of people are in a different cycle, unfortunately. And I, you know, one of my main goals and one of our main goals at our facilities is we really want to keep people off of, uh, of the things that are, are harmful to them that the profession is doing very regularly to them. For example, uh, we know that steroid injections, which are commonly used, um, actually degenerates and weakens the tissue further. And uh, although it gets rid of inflammation, it's, it's for a temporary period of time. What happens is the tissue is weaker and less healthy afterwards. And it also has other systemic effects, which is a long laundry list of things. We want to keep people away from narcotics as much as possible. That's commonly prescribed in this country. And we know there's a lot of increased overdoses and addiction associated with these and, uh, and other things, of course. And then the people over the counter are using uh, lots of uh, anti-inflammatory drugs, the NSAIDs, we call them non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. They're getting prescribed, they're being purchased over the counter. And there's a lot of things associated with it. I had a patient this morning told me she was taking uh, just a leave over the counter and she developed a, a gastrointestinal bleed and that's why she can't take it anymore. This is so common. There's a long list of things that these medications can cause. And then, um, and then unnecessary surgeries. There's so many surgeries that are being done that uh, we've been able to show through our registry data and, uh, and the times that we've been doing this that we're preventing a large percentage of those surgeries. So what it is that we're doing is we're, we're basically um, taking the healing factors that that person um, uh, already has, but through but for whatever reason, the person is unable to get enough growth factors, enough stem cells to that area to reach and cross the threshold needed to, um, to, to, to create some type of healing to get rid of the pain. And so we're, we're going to push the odds in their favor by taking those factors through uh, really sophisticated and proprietary type of uh, techniques in the laboratory. We're able to isolate, concentrate, and stay within FDA uh, guidelines for uh, how, we, how we work and manipulate the tissue. We're able to make that into a liquid form that then uh, myself and the other doctors in our practices can, can inject and a key here, this is really a key, it's got to be injected directly into the tissue and it's got to be done under precise image guidance using live 
fluoroscopy, which is x-ray, live ultrasound. And that's where the skill comes in. And that's where we're getting really frustrated. And what we're seeing out in the community is that a lot of people are telling patients that you can just stick it anywhere you want. The stem cells know where to go, put it in an IV, you put it in, 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 in a muscle. Uh, this is just simply not the case. Really, the skill is in getting it placed precisely into the tissue that's damaged uh, and using uh, uh, techniques in the laboratory allow us to get uh, a powerful material, healing material that comes from the patient. And what we're seeing is that uh, in some cases, we can get things to regenerate. In other cases, we know that the tissue is getting stronger, less inflamed, more stable, um, and generally less painful. And we're seeing that from all conditions associated with arthritis and tendon tears and ligament tears and instability and pinched nerves and discs in the back and all these different areas. But again, um, I think that a, a problem, and we should probably get into this at some point here, is that it, most of what's being done in the community is unfortunately either fraudulent or of low skill. And I think that that deserves some uh, discussion. It, it does. And I'll go ahead and, and go out here and say this as well. You know, I've been uh, frustrated. I should say surprised, but honestly, not totally just because I know how some people are, how they like to take advantage and essentially just be marketers, not really looking out for the benefit of others. But, you know, it's crazy to me when I look at some of these different practitioners out there who are saying, hey, we do stem cells. And here's the thing you have to know. Uh, everybody listening here is that just because somebody is marketing stem cells doesn't mean that it's that, that they're doing things the right way. In fact, a lot of these stem cells, I know Dr. James can speak to this, they're not coming from bone marrow. In fact, a lot of them, they're not even really stem cells. They're just, they're growth factors, which aren't the same thing, not even close. You know, I, I Dr. James have had other regenerative therapies, you know, before like prolotherapy and to where maybe it helped with some of the ligaments and things. The mm -hmm. difference I noticed when I saw you specifically uh, for my regenerative therapies for stem cell, I saw over 10 times the results. In fact, 10 times it's sort of downplaying it because I didn't really see or notice a difference with the other injections I got from another local practitioner and versus I mean, three months later, I could not believe the change I saw in my body. And my wife, Chelsea, said the same thing. And other people we've sent to you over the years have said the same thing. So all that being said, if you're listening to this and we're talking about stem cells, we're talking about PRP, you have to know a couple of big things. Number one, the doctor matters, the practitioner matters, that they go to the exact location under imaging and put the cells in the perfect area. They have to do that. 90% of them aren't doing that. Number two, mm -hmm. the other thing I was so impressed of with Dr. James with Regenix is you guys were doing a very concentrated form of plasma. You guys were doing it from the bone marrow. And then with that, I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts on, just feel free to say whatever you want while we're talking about, but I'd also like to talk about Chelsea and I have seen you in Florida but also we've seen you in Cayman Islands. There's something really unique you guys do in Cayman. And Chelsea and I actually had our cells drawn and we bank them there because we actually get more um, treatments that way. Can, can you talk about you know, several of those things? Yeah, no problem. So, you know, we, there, are, there are clear FDA regulations. And at this point in time, the FDA in the United States is, is unfortunately not being very aggressive with their enforcement. Little bits here and there, but we're expecting them to get aggressive and we hope they will be actually by November of 2020. That's kind of the, the timeline. And the point I'm making there is um, there are certain things we're allowed to do in the U S and there's certain things we're not allowed to do in the U S and we don't cross that line. Uh, you know, our interpretation of the guidelines are we are allowed to use bone marrow, uh, what we call minimally manipulate that bone marrow to isolate layers that contain high concentration of stem cells and then inject that back into the same person during the same, day or same surgical procedure. That's allowed. What you're not allowed to do is take stem cells, isolate them and grow them. You're not allowed to do that. Uh, you can't store them for future use on that same per, uh, on a person. You can't, um, you can't technically isolate stem cells from fat tissue in the United States, although there are, are a lot of stem cells in fat tissue. The FDA feels if you take stem cells out of fat, which requires a step in the laboratory, to digest and break apart that fat, that step, the FDA feels makes it, uh, turns it basically into a drug and requires drug approval process. 
So you're not allowed to do that. What you are allowed to do is take fat and um, um, put it into a form that you can inject without technically isolating the stem cells. We call that microfragmented fat. And then you're allowed to use it back in the same person during the same day, surgical, same surgical procedure we call it, um, for the purpose of cushion or support. Um, so that's allowed. Uh, and so we have those limitations. And again, you're allowed to take platelets, isolate them, concentrate them, and put them in uh, to the same person, same day. Uh, the platelets, um, in particular, you're mentioning growth factors. So I'll get back to that for a second. Uh, we are able to concentrate and isolate different parts of the platelets. Um, we can pull growth factors out of the platelets, which are called what's called platelet lysate. We're able to take the we're able to leave in or take out red blood cells or white blood cells, which is valuable depending on what type of tissue we're injecting. And we have found that we can we can concentrate the platelets much more. Point being is we have we have what's called a flexible laboratory platform. We have this large thousand pound sterile hood where we have a highly trained laboratory technician following protocols to be able to get individualized products. Whereas, you know, nine, 10 years ago when I started doing this and what a lot of people are doing today is they take the blood, put it into some type of a kit, put it in a centrifuge, and in 14 minutes they have, you know, one size fits all product. That's not at all what we're doing. It's a much high, more highly sophisticated thing. But with that being said, you know, the bone marrow procedures we do are, are quite effective for many different types of uh, issues, but there are potentially some advantages to growing those stem cells. Um, and so we no longer do that in the United States. Uh, Regenix is, has a facility they associate with down in uh, Grand Cayman. And down there, the, the, the laws are different and you are allowed to do that. So there's about 10 of us across the country who are licensed uh, to, uh, in Grand Cayman, uh, part of Regenix, and we rotate through, most of us seeing our own patients. So I may see some patients in Florida who then meet me down in Grand Cayman for these procedures where we're able to take the bone marrow on one visit, then they're isolated, the stem cells, and grown, and then stored until the person is ready to come back for another visit where we go ahead and do the treatments like we did with you and your wife and like I've personally had done myself. Um, and that's, that is, in some cases, more effective, depending on the, on the, on the type of thing we're trying to treat. Uh, discs in the back, for example, it's likely more effective. Uh, bad hip arthritis, it's likely more effective. Uh, we're able to get, it's, it's quite a large number, we're able to get 100 to 1,000 times more stem cells when we grow them uh, than if we just take them and use them in the same day without growth. And... Um, uh, the other advantage is that you can do one bone marrow procedure and treat many different areas, still likely have uh, left over for future treatment of other areas. You don't have to go through another bone marrow procedure. And you can potentially do it as an as a insurance policy in a sense that you can take your younger cells and use them when you're older. So if you're 40 years old and you get a bone marrow procedure and store them, you could potentially use those stem cells when you're 50, 55 and there is an advantage uh, uh, to using younger stem cells, using your own younger stem cells. So that's an interesting thing. And the point is we've, we've been able to do this. We've done this now as an organization for 15 years. We have 15 years worth of registry data on using this and the largest safety papers in the world published on this. This is not a brand new procedure. This is not something that we don't understand the, uh, the safety associated with it. We also have a good sense of the effectiveness of it. And of course, there's more data that needs to be published, but there's one uh, phase two clinical trial going on now. And there's, of course, all the patients we see are tracked by a registry, by a team of professional researchers. So we understand safety, we understand the effectiveness, and uh, we're able to address um, uh, uh, people's concerns as they're going along and record that for for uh, informing us for future treatments. So anyway, I think that's uh, that's a basic summary. I can answer other questions yeah. about it. Yeah, I, th I think it's fantastic. And I wanted to say this too, that um, you know one of the things that is so impressive about what uh, you're able to do and Regenix is you guys are able to custom formulate uh, per se for each and every individual. Again, I know that the uh, healing factors you use with myself or the way you guys did my treatment was different than Chelsea's and most people it's one fit, size fits all and it's not effective treatment it's not the same uh, processing or uh, concentration of cells so everybody think about this like you have healing factors in your body okay when you injure an area of your body your body repairs it with stem cells and platelets and these growth factors 
And a lot of times, Dr. James said this earlier, it's hard for them. Sometimes they're not getting to the area of the body to heal the area. So if you've got low back pain, knee pain, hip pain, shoulder pain, pain in your neck, wherever it is, uh, and that area is still in pain, it hasn't fully healed. So what Regenix is able to do is go and really focus on your bone marrow and your blood. They'll take bone marrow and your blood. They'll concentrate and get those healing factors that your body most needs, go and re re-inject it into the area. And what I've seen and what the medical research has seen and what they've seen via their own, uh, you know, thousands upon thousands of case studies they've collected is the improvements that at least I know I've seen have been dramatic and how my joints have felt afterwards. And the other thing I'll say too, is it's an investment, you know, stem cell therapy, PRP, they're not cheap therapies like going in and just getting a cortisone inject injection, something paid from insurance, but those things actually make you worse over time. I think if you think about it this way, like for Chelsea and I, this is an investment in our health. We actually see it long-term in a way, even saving us money because we're not going to pay the medical bills. We're not having high insurance bills. We're not. And, and the other thing is we want to be running around playing golf, running on the beach, going to Disney when we're in our 80s. And right. for us, that investment's been worth it. So again, I think that's the way that most people that probably work with you guys think about it is, you know, what, how valuable is your health? How valuable is it to be pain-free and have your joints feeling great? So I think those things are so important. The other thing, we were so impressed with the Grand Cayman facilities. When we went down to Grand Cayman, an amazing hotel we stayed at on the beach. You know, we swam in the Caribbean water. We went and got our treatments there. Your guys is awesome, state-of-the-art facilities. And so, again, that's another thing. Just uh, we, Again, I've had treatment at your Tampa uh, facility, but also down in Grand Cayman, and both were, uh, both were excellent. Talk to me about you know, some of the results that you've seen in region X, maybe with a few specific areas, maybe knee pain or knee issues, low back and any other you think might be, um, uh, you know, that a lot of people are struggling with. Yeah, I think uh, those are good areas to talk about. We can, we can jump into those. I wanted to just jump back for a second and we we're talking about coverage and, and, and insurance. Um, you know, we're fortunate that Regenix as an organization has been able to collect this data and then go to companies, self-insured, self-funded companies. These are companies who um, are uh, basically they fund their own insurance for their employees. They're able to add programs into their insurance mix as a covered benefit for their employees. And so Regenix has been able to go to many companies, uh, hundreds, and um, uh, show them the cost savings data and the effectiveness data and compare it to the published data for standard ways of treating these conditions, in particular surgeries. And what we're showing and what we're seeing is that we're saving, uh, we're able to save these companies, uh, you know, close to 80% of uh, what it would cost if they went a traditional route. And so a lot of companies have been signing on and saying, we wanna uh, offer Regenix procedures to our employees. And fortunately, I think that's good. It allows more and more people to have access to these, these procedures. And we're seeing, uh, you know, big companies and, and uh, a diocese and municipalities and various ones adding uh, this as a covered benefit for their employees. So we're proud of that and we want to be able to continue that and that's, that's continued to expand. And that's primarily for the United States procedures. Uh, so going back to what you asked me regarding um, outcomes, I guess is what you want to know. And, and so uh, the, you know, the two most common things I think that we treat are knee related conditions, in particular osteoarthritis of the knees, and uh, lumbar, low back pain of different kinds, and there's different uh, sources of low back pain. But we treat, those are two, I think, that come up the most when we see people. We certainly see a lot of hip and neck and shoulder and wrist and ankles and so forth, but those are the two the most common. So we'll start with the, with the knee pain. Um, when in, in regards to knees, I'd say the majority of the people, and maybe it's because we're in Florida, but I think it's probably the case throughout the country, most of the people we're seeing are at a stage where someone has told them that they need a knee replacement or they need a knee scope surgery or they should get a cortisone injection uh, or something like that. Um, and uh, those people are, are in a pool of, of statistics that we're able to pull from. And when we do our procedures, we're seeing that, you know, probably 90% of them have a positive outcome uh, from our procedures when we track them over time, one year, two years and beyond. And even for people who are in the category of needing a knee replacement, in our clinics, and we have clinics in Miami uh, now coming up, uh, Sarasota, Tampa, and 
about to do St. Pete as well, St. Petersburg. Um, in our clinics, we're seeing an average improvement uh, in those patients of about 60 to 70% improvement in their terms of the level of pain and their improvement in their level of function. And that is really meaningful, clinically meaningful. I, I would say a lot of people are higher than that, 90 plus percent improvement, but every once in a while I get someone who has a low percentage improvement and does bring down that percentage. But 60 to 70 percent is, is quite good, and especially when we're talking about the severe cases. Um, the most important thing we're seeing is that people get better function. Um, and, and when you compare it to surgeries like arthroscopy, which has been around for uh, decades now and is so commonplace, uh, there have been more and more studies coming out showing that arthroscopy for uh, like a scope, they call it, for a knee meniscus injury, uh, especially if it's a, a degenerative condition where it just kind of tore over time without a specific trauma, um, those surgeries are ineffective and in fact may be harmful and may increase the likelihood that that person needs to get a knee replacement down the line and accelerate the arthritis in their joint. So why would you go through a surgery, which is painful and um, uh, uh, time consuming, uh, when in fact what's going to happen is you're going to be worse off than you were before. Uh, so we feel that we can replace uh, uh, almost all of these arthroscopies with the procedures that we're doing. Uh, we're seeing uh, really miraculous things with ACL tears. So if someone has an ACL tear, an ACL is a ligament, it's a thick a uh, large ligament in the middle of the knee that provides stability in the middle of the knee. If that ligament is almost all the way torn, 60, 70%, 80% torn, or even completely torn, but the two ends are very close together still, we have seen quite a lot of success in getting that ligament to, to grow back together and strengthen. This is remarkable. There have been a couple of published studies by Regenix regarding this, and we're seeing this in our own practice quite, quite a bit. And so what we end up seeing is a lot of people with arthritis who have partial ACL ligament tears or very lax or loose ligaments and instability is created in the knee and that instability worsens their arthritic condition. Uh, we're able to get those ligaments to tighten up and to actually uh, uh, at least move in a direction toward more normal and more and more stable. So you know, we're real happy with our knee results. Um, and that's, that's the procedure here in the U.S. And in Cayman, I don't have comparative data, but the procedure is at least as effective in Cayman, if not more effective. And what's, what's nice about the Cayman procedure is that you, when we're culturing and growing the stem cells, is the fact that you can, treat, you can treat both knees at the same time or multiple areas where really in the U.S., if someone has a pretty arthritic knee with other things going on that knee, I would have to do one bone marrow procedure uh, for that knee, and I, it would be difficult to treat two bad knees, for example. Uh, so what we end up doing in the U.S. is we'll treat one bad knee with the bone marrow protocol, and we'll treat the second knee with the platelets and possibly with the microfragmented fat that I was talking about earlier, and then we can treat both knees that way. But in Cayman, you can potentially most likely get enough stem cells grown where you could treat two bad knees at the same time. Uh, and then in regards to lumbar, uh, we're seeing a lot of good success with, with things like I had personally, which were tears in the back of my disc. So I had what's called discogenic back pain, uh, which it was really debilitating and I'd have these severe episodes periodically where I couldn't get off the floor kind of thing. And I, that happened for years and years and years until I finally got my discs injected with the culture expanded stem cells. And for me personally, that's been about uh, two and a half years, uh, almost yeah, two and a half years. And I've been, I've been doing fantastically well. And I don't, uh, and I, I, I totally attribute to those injections at that time. Um, you know, I don't want to talk about your case, Josh, uh, because I that's saw great improvements. I bulged two discs in my, my, my low back doing, uh, pretty much CrossFit. Okay. So just doing cleans and Olympic weightlifting that I, you know, and it's hard you know, you're doing it for time, no excuses. You know, I, I know proper form, but anyways, uh, was being overly competitive and ended up hurting myself. But the results I saw were amazing. And I'll say this too. I just want to say this about low back pain specifically, the surgery rate, you know, there was a 2016 study that came out, one of the largest ever on low back pain, 74.6, nearly 75% of back surgeries are failures. And that's being, you know, kind of friendly to, we're not even talking about the longer long-term results. I think it's closer to almost all of them. But anyways, all that being said, 75% of back sur surgeries failing versus your guys' success rate is so high 
it's just anyways, it's, um, it's a, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time of building enough of a database to convince the insurance companies. I mean, it does take time. You're right. These back surgeries are uh, often not only ineffective, but they create new problems a lot of times. Sometimes they're effective for a short time, but then you end up like if it's a fusion, you change the biomechanics so much in the area that the forces have to get distributed above and below that, that fusion. And then you start to see breakdown of the tissue above and below. We, we even have a term for it in, in the medical world. It's called adjacent, adjacent uh, segment disease. And that's just so common. Um, I'm really satisfied with the results that we get with the lumbar procedures that we do in the cervical, uh, you know, the entire spine. And typically, unfortunately, you know, most of the time we don't even have to jump to a stem cell procedure. We can do uh, spine procedures quite well with PRP or the platelets uh, concentrated, as long as we're doing it as a comprehensive type of an approach where we're treating the, the whole region and we're doing um, um, targeted injections under image guidance into the joints, into the muscles, into the ligaments, around the nerves. You know, we maybe end up doing 15, 20 different injections, but we're trying to strengthen the region because it's, it's not a spot problem. It's usually a regional problem. And then if we need to, if that's insufficient, then we will go into the disc. And then typically if we go in the disc, we, we, we can go in with platelets or bone marrow concentrate in the U.S., or with the culture expanded stem cells in Cayman, all of them are, are quite effective. Uh, I think the Cayman procedure probably the most effective. But um, you know, I think the, the lumbar procedures. Uh, you know, so many people have back pain. They always say it's a eighty percent of the population has back pain at some point, and um, we we have something here that really needs to be available to the masses because this is really a strategy that is really effective. And of course, we're going to do this in conjunction with uh, trying to get the person to eat, eat healthfully, to uh, exercise properly and work with proper therapy or chiropractic and and live a lifestyle that supports healthy, healthy tissue. It's just one other piece of that puzzle, but it's a really, really important uh, part of that program, the injection part of it. And that was one of the things I respect so much about uh, you, Dr. James, and your organization there with uh, Re Reginex. And that is, you guys have a holistic approach. You guys are looking at, again, diet. You know, I was impressed with looking at some of the supplements you guys recommended from turmeric to hyaluronic acid to collagen and some of the other things. You guys have, you know, one of the things that I even saw on my rehab sheet was recommending certain exercises and seeing practitioners who do things like Egoscue and uh, Postural Restoration Institute and some of the others. And then, of course, recommending even other practitioners, you know, for some people, things like chiropractic, physical therapy and those sorts of things. So I was, uh, again, just uh, just so impressed. So um, let me ask you this. What is the difference if somebody's looking between PRP and stem cells? Well, what is the real difference between the two and what conditions typically need PRP versus which conditions typically need more stem cell therapy? Yeah, I mean, that's a, it's a common question. It's a really good question. I think um, we, we think of PRP and stem cell and bone marrow concentrate, which have the stem cells in them. We think of them as similar treatments in the sense that they're both trying to achieve the same thing. We're trying to heal tissue, strengthen tissue, uh, create stability, decrease inflammation. They both do that. Um, they do them at varying degrees. So uh, most of the time we're thinking of mild to moderate conditions. I'll give you some examples here in a moment. Mild to moderate conditions uh, being treated with uh, concentrated platelets, PRP, um, versus conditions that we would label as moderate to severe. We would consider treating that with a bone marrow uh, stem cell procedure and even more severe possibly with culture expanded stem cells in Grand Cayman. Um, so for example, if we're talking about a tendon issue like a tennis elbow or an Achilles tendinosis, we call it, or a patella tendon problem or a rotator cuff tendon, if those tendons are degenerated and maybe fraying, but not quite torn or maybe mildly torn, then that's something we would treat with PRP. And usually you need one treatment, but sometimes second or third treatment are necessary to get to uh, a satisfactory level of improvement. Uh, whereas if there's a bigger tear, let's say there's, you know, 30, 40, 50% tear, or maybe even higher, uh, that's something we would uh, probably jump straight to doing a bone marrow procedure, at least making that as a recommendation. Uh, same thing with arthritis. If you have more mild to moderate arthritis, uh, then we're probably going to lean uh, and recommend uh, a platelet PRP type procedure, whereas moderate to severe arthritis, we're typically going to be recommending a um, 
uh, a stem cell or bone marrow related procedure. Uh, you know, there's an exception to that rule though. However, in the spine, for some reason, uh, the spine responds very, very well to platelet procedures. Uh, they're all fine injections into small structures, but um, even if you have an advanced condition in the spine, I do think it's often worth starting with a platelet procedure, one or two of them, because most people seem to do quite well with that. So, uh, you know, why jump straight to the bone marrow procedure in that case? So we have data to support that. That's been our experience. So in that case, we would do more of a PRP. I hope that, you know, does that address what you're asking? It, it, it does. It's super helpful. So as Dr. James is saying, hey, tendinopathies, different types of tendon issues and mild tears. We're talking PRP. Anything beyond that stem cell seems to be the recommendation. One of the last things I want to talk about, because I just think this is so important. There is, and you see, you started off and you mentioned some of this. There are so many, I'm going to call them stem cell scams. I don't know how else to put it because I think there are practitioners out there saying they're stem cells and they're not. And so I, I, you know, I have a heart and I feel like, you know, everyone who listens to my podcast, I want to give them information, but also, Hey, I want to protect them. I, I try and treat my listeners like I would my own family. And so that being said, what are some of the things people need to look out for when we're talking about these stem cell scams that these, these some of these people are doing out there? Yeah, this is a major, major issue. And I spent a lot of time talking to patients about this, but I've also spoken to the boards of medicine and and uh, the medical societies, uh, we're, in, we're, we're fearful of what's being done out there for patients' safety, and we're also fearful that what's being done is going to uh, result in legislation, for example, that's going to eliminate the entire field. That almost happened here in Florida in 2019. There was legislation that was introduced that was basically going to get rid of all stem cells and didn't carve out any exemptions for the things that were appropriately being done uh, under, you know, following the FDA regulations. It was just basically going to be a, a broad sweep and, and get rid of just about everything. Um, and that, that, that we're scared of as well. So what's happening, in, and this is the model that we're typically seeing, and I'll explain it here. So we've got these birth tissue manufacturers. When I say birth tissue, I mean amniotic, placental, umbilical tissue that come from babies, right? So we know that those uh, tissues in fact, do have a high amount of young stem cells in them. So the, the logic that's being propagated is that if you take those tissues at the time of birth and you package them and sell them to a doctor, this is, this is the lie. If you sell them to a doctor that they do, in fact, contain a lot of stem cells and that your body won't react to them because they're, they're designed to be uh, hidden from the immune system in a sense and that uh, they're better than your stem cells because they're younger, um, and uh, furthermore, you don't really even need to place them anywhere ne uh, near the, the tissue that's a problem because the stem cells will hone in and know exactly where to go. I just listed a whole bunch of, uh, of, of falsehoods there. Yeah. Um, what we're seeing, in fact, is that these products, first of all, they're not allowed to have stem cells in them. If they did, they would be required to be regulated as a drug by the FDA, and, and the guidelines on that are, are quite clear, and the FDA's statements about this have been quite clear. So they're not allowed to have stem cells. Secondly, um, they don't. Uh, when, they're, when they've been tested independently by various academic uh, laboratories, they find that the stem cells are not, and this is, includes Regenix has tested these as well, they don't have living stem cells in, in them. And what you said earlier is correct. What they have is, is growth factors and maybe a bit, a bit of a different ratio than your own platelet growth factors, and maybe not even as many as your own platelets. Um, but that's what they are. But the problem is you can't charge as much money to, to a, a prospective patient if you tell them that they're only growth factors. So they tell them it's stem cells and they charge really lots and lots of money uh, for these procedures and for these vials. And so we're seeing uh, fraudulent uh, marketing of these products. We're seeing poor skill in placement of the products. We're seeing facilities that don't have um, proper emergency setup for for complications if they occur. So the birth tissue manufacturers, they coordinate uh, with distributors and with marketing companies. And then they go out and they go to offices and uh, sometimes they're chiropractic offices, sometimes they're, they're other medical offices. And they, they, uh, they give them a turnkey kind of program where they can then um, um, purchase the products from these manufacturers and they get a kickback for that. And then um, uh, the 
in a chiropractic office, for example, they would have to hire someone to do the injection. So they would hire a nurse practitioner or a physician's assistant to do the injections, typically uh, with lower skill level. And then there's got to be an MD or DO somewhere uh, off-site, typically, that's going to be uh, signing off on all of this. And that's the model we've seen repeated probably a thousand times across the country. And we're waiting and we're hoping and we keep expecting that the FDA is going to step in and do something about this. But they've had, they've had, um, uh, they put out a statement about two years ago saying that, you know, they're going to give the industry about three years to come into regulation and they're going to let it regulate itself unless there's been some sort of evidence of harm, then they'll step in and, and, uh, 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 force some sort of change. Uh, so that's that time period, that grace period ends in November, and we're all just waiting with bated breath to see how uh, how the FDA is going to react to this. Because right now, we're seeing lots of problems. We, we now have Google uh, saying that they're no longer allowing any Google advertising of PRP or stem cells of any kind and with PRP having substantial evidence for knee arthritis, for example, they're making they're they're acting as a quasi governmental regulatory agency with the, with this kind of a stance. And you know, to some extent, it's helpful to us because we we haven't been allowed to advertise on Google for a few years now, and everybody else around us has been. Now at least the playing field is level. None of us can advertise, and I, I think that's a, probably a better place for us to be and for for patients in general until the field can get cleaned up. And then everything can sort of, uh, we, we know that the people out there are doing something valid and regul and under regulations, you know. So I think that kind of uh, is a lot of information, but I think it sums up a lot of it. It's, it's super, super helpful. And so I'll say this as well. For myself, I spent, I mean, anytime I do anything, I research and spend so many hours talking to medical doctors, reading research studies, searching all over the country. So when Chelsea and I were looking to you know, get stem cell and PRP, we wanted to see the best in the world. And so that's why we, you know, sought you out, Dr. James and Reginex. And so I want to encourage everybody listening. It's rare for me to promote anything that um, that's, that's not just food, you know, or supplements. And so for myself, you know, I take certain supplements like our ancient nutrition supplements. I, I, uh, you know, there's a few other things I, I do for my health and exercises and things I've recommended over the years. But I want everybody to know, I do recommend and fully embrace Reginex and Dr. James uh, Lieber here. And so if you are looking to get stem cell or PRP, if you're struggling with neck pain, low back pain, knee pain, hip pain, shoulder pain, and you want to get the best results possible, surgery is not the answer I can tell you. Look at the studies. 75% of back surgeries fail. Many of these surgeries, most don't work long term versus this you're using your own healing and growth factor. So I want to encourage you guys, check out Dr. James's website and the Regenex uh, network specifically in Cayman. And you can go online on your search engine and just search Dr. James Lieber. It's spelled doctor and then J-A-M-E-S, James Lieber is spelled L-E-I-B-E-R, Dr. James Lieber. And you can just look up uh, Dr. James Lieber and Re Regenex as well or Regenex Cayman. R-E-G-E-N-E-X-X, Cayman, -E -E and then let them know Dr. Ax sent you, let them know Dr. James Lieber sent you uh, here as well. But I want to encourage you guys, again, I want the best for you. I want to see you, he you know, healthy. I want to see you running around at 80 years old, golfing, swimming, you know, doing, doing what you want, active still your entire life. And so again, it's so important that you invest in yourself and take care of yourself if you want to be healthy and again, stem cell therapy, PRP therapy can work if it's done the right way, as Dr. James started talking about. And you using your own cells injected to the right area by the right practitioner. And again, uh, I hope everybody's enjoyed this episode. Dr. James, I want to say thanks so much for coming on. And I know Chelsea, thanks you. She wanted to say, hey, I was just, before hey. I came up here to record, she, uh, she said hello. And, uh, you know, she, uh, man, and, and actually, just about Chelsea, so Chelsea's knee was so bad, she it hurt for her to just even flex her knee. I mean, she it hurt for her. She couldn't run at all. She it hurt when she walked some. She uh, saw Dr. James there at Region X came in, and now she is uh, she's able to run. She's able to lunge. 
She's doing Peloton. In fact, I bought her a Peloton for Christmas bike. Awesome. And I mean, so, Great. you know, you guys may see her on there if we have, we have any Peloton uh, riders out there, but she is riding three days a week, like, you know, just crushing awesome. it on the Peloton. So, hey, thank you so much. We really appreciate you and, uh, you know, and, and your, your care. So just want to, and, and thanks for being on today. I'm so happy, you know, to hear that. That's like, you know, what, what, what fuels me is, is to hear people getting back to those things that they love to do. It's just, it's just what keeps, keeps me going every day. I just wanted to also state uh, real quickly that the name of our facility is Regenix Tampa Bay. That covers uh, the Sarasota Tampa region. And then our facility in Miami area, uh, we, we've named it uh, Gold Coast Orthopedics. And that's goldcoastorthopedics.com. Um, and our Regenix Tampa Bay is regentampabay.com. Uh, we'd love to to see you, give you our opinion, um, develop a relationship, and have uh, a, an honest uh, discussion of what your options are, and uh, hopefully be able to help you get back to the things you love to do. I love that, Dr. James. So I just encourage you guys, if, you, if you're saying to yourself and you're living with this pain and you want help, again, give, uh, give Riginex uh, Tampa Bay a call there or look up Dr. James Lieber. You'll find him online and give him a call and they can do a consultation with you to see if you're a candidate for care there as well. Wanna uh, wanna say, hey, thanks everybody for listening. Dr. James, hey, thanks for joining me here today. I'll be back with another podcast next week. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. 